everybody, it's Ryan and welcome back to First Do No Harm. Today I am in my room and I am going to do a more complete review of the Kaplan um, MCAT books, the brand new ones. So here they are. So I did a first impression of the books a couple of weeks ago and I just wanted to do a more complete review today and tell you guys if I really think it's worth it to get the new books if you already have the old books. So let's get started. So when you buy the books, you get seven of them. You get Behavioral Sciences, Biochemistry, Biology, General Chemistry, Organic Chemistry, phys Physics and Math, and Verbal or CARS or whatever you call it, so Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills. So I'll show you what all the books look like. So let me take the sticky note off of this one. My life is ruled by sticky notes, if you know me, you know that. Um, but here is the, let's see if I can fix where the glare is. Um, here's the Behavioral Sciences book. It's fairly thick. Here is Biology. Here is Organic Chemistry. Biochemistry. Cars or Verbal or whatever. Physics and Math. And Gen Chem. So, my honest impression so far, and I haven't been through them completely yet, I've just read several chapters out of each, um, but my impression so far is they are the same as the old ones, except they do have more of like a tool that you can use. Let me find the behavioral sciences one, because I've been through that one the most so far. There it is. Um, so they have kind of a tool that you can use that will help you kind of gauge which chapters you need to study more than other chapters. So it doesn't really necessarily come with more information, but just hold on one second. Let me show you. Let me find a good chapter. Okay, so this one, for example, this is chapter three. Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show some of this stuff on camera, so I'm going to block out the name of the chapter and everything, but I'm going to show you something. So, um, it comes with what's called a chapter profile, and there's like a little pie chart there, and it will show you, um, like roughly how much of this section of the MCAT is contained in this chapter. So like for chapter three, for instance, there's 16% of everything psychology and sociology related on the MCAT is in chapter three. So that is kind of a helpful tool to, I don't know if you're wanting to um, just study the heavier chapters first, like the higher yield chapters, and leave the chapters that are only like four or 5% of the content is in that chapter on the MCAT if you wanna leave that for later. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I've just been reading the like, 15, 16, 17 percent chapters first and then kind of working my way down to the lower percentages. So that's one strategy I guess that you could use. Something else that comes in these that didn't come in my old ones. I don't know if it came in um, the later versions. Mine was a really early version. It was like the second edition of my old old ones. Um, but there's the learning goals for each here. I'll just show you back here so you can't really see them. Too good. But um, there's the learning goals in here, and this little badge will tell you if the content is high yield or not. And that means, like, if a piece of content is really high yield, it means that you're pretty likely to see something similar on the MCAT. Um, so that's really helpful. My old ones did not come with that, and they didn't come with, like, the learning objectives. So that's really helpful. Um, if you watched Cadence in my last video, whenever we made our um, study tips and stuff, um, if you want to go through the learning goals and make sure after you're done reading that chapter or that section that you really, really understand the, um, like, what the book is telling you that it wants you to know. So that's really, really helpful, and that's something else that I've been going through. I will show you in this book a little bit of what I've been doing. I've only done this for a couple of chapters in this book so far because I try to go through the chapters really, really thoroughly, but, um... So what I've been doing is making the teeny tiny sticky notes of information and let me find a better page than that and writing down on the sticky notes the um, learning objectives, the things that have to do with the learning objectives that I found out of the 
book and highlighting it in pink and then like writing it down on the pink sticky notes. I don't have a lot of pink sticky notes left so I'll have to switch to a different color but it doesn't really matter but yeah that's kind of how I've been studying. This little sticky note that I've stuck on my behavioral book to kind of keep me on track about which colors that I'm doing so like my yellow highlights are my vocabulary and my pink are my learning goals and my orange is just like if the book comes out and says hey you gotta know this I highlight that in orange and I haven't gone through and done that in this book yet but that's what I'm gonna do and there is also this one little teeny tiny quick sheets it's a very very thin little book and it contains all of the um, sort of topics that are on the MCAT but it comes with things like formulas and just really quick pieces of information that you can use maybe like the night before you go to take your real MCAT or right before you want to take a practice test just to kind of jog your memory about some of the really important pieces of content. Um, so yeah, it comes with every single chat or every single book, I mean, except for verbal or cars. Um, but honestly, I really, if I were to take my MCAT again, I probably would not go over a whole lot of, let me find it, a whole lot of this book if I did it again, because even though there are, I don't know if there's things in here that says if it's high yield or not, um, but there are sort of little practice passages in here and those are helpful. But I honestly didn't find this book to be incredibly helpful whenever I went to take my MCAT the first time. Um, and I'd say that this one is probably just about exactly like the old books. And honestly, I just don't really find it that helpful. I think that there are better methods that you can use to improve your car score if your car score is stuck. Um, but definitely the passages in this book, the practice passages and the questions and stuff, that's very helpful. But I don't personally think that the book itself is very helpful. And another thing, I don't really think that the physics review is incredibly helpful either because it is a very thick book. But there's not that many physics questions even on the MCAT. If you look, it breaks down the books, um, or I mean the, um, it breaks down the amount of each like each topic on the MCAT, um, each subject, I guess. And it says that physics, chemical and physical, is about 25% of the chemical and physical section is physics related. Now, 25% of one section, so be a fourth times a fourth, so it'd just be a sixteenth of the entire MCAT is physics related. So if I were you, I would probably just go through the really high yield things for physics, go through the equations. There's also some tips on how to shorthand logarithms, which that's very helpful because I saw logarithms quite a bit on the MCAT. Um, so go through the last couple of chapters out of that that are the math related stuff. But honestly, if you've taken physics, you're probably good. Now, I didn't even take physics before I took my MCAT. I'm taking it this year. And I got the highest score on my physics and gen chem section um, out of any of my other sections. So it might be because that was the first section and I was the freshest. I don't know. But yeah, I personally, I think it's a whole lot of information that you would have to cram into your brain for not a whole lot of yield. So my personal opinion, I think you should go through biochemistry the hardest and really hit everything out of biochemistry really hard because the vast majority of the test is biochemistry. Probably the second hardest go through behavioral sciences because there is an entire section of the MCAT dedicated to that. Third hardest, biology. And, or maybe third hardest to tie between biology and general chemistry. So maybe tie these two. And then fourth hardest, organic. And just kind of as needed for physics and math personally because I really believe that's how you're going to score the highest on the MCAT that you can do unless you're just an absolute genius and you have so much time to study. Um, if you're kind of in a pinch, like you only have a couple of months before your test day, that is what I would recommend. So biochemistry and behavioral science is the hardest and um, gen chem and biology kind of second-ish. Just remember, you have a limited amount of time to study the stuff that you got to study, and if there's less stuff that you can study and do better than if you were trying to 
get everything memorized, then you might end up doing better. Something else really, really cool though that does come with these books is you get the online book and three practice tests. So I believe that the practice tests are online. Oh, there goes my cat. Hey, baby. <laughs> she wanted to come and say hi. Um, but so something really, really cool that comes with these books is you also get the online resources. So you get some practice tests to kind of gauge where you are in the sciences and you get like a full length practice test to kind of diagnose where you are as far as studying for the MCAT. So that's really, really helpful. There's also so many questions that come with these books. There's 15 at the end of every chapter and it comes with the answers and the, um, like the explanations for why something's right and why something's wrong. So those are very, very, very helpful. At least they were for me whenever I was studying the MCAT. So as far as being worth it to buy the new ones, if you already have the old ones, I think absolutely yes for me anyway. It is very worth it just because it has the, um, like the pie chart thing that breaks down um, how likely you are to see something on the MCAT. So you're not really putting so much effort into something that might not really be that high yield of content on the MCAT. <laughs> she wants me to pet her and then she gets angry that I pet her. You don't make sense. But I think she wants out of my room. Here you go, honey. But so also in addition to the pie chart, also the high yield banner that it shows if a topic is high yield or not high yield and um, the learning objectives for me, that makes it all worthwhile to go ahead and get the new books, even though I had the old ones, because it seems like with the old ones, you could study material that really just didn't matter as much as the other material in terms of are you going to see it on the MCAT or not. So it is a better use of your time, I guess, to um, study the material that you know is going to be really high yield that you're pretty sure is going to be on the MCAT rather than wasting so much time trying to hammer into your brain all kinds of stuff that really you might not even see on there. So for that alone, it was more than worth it for me to get go ahead and get the books. Like I said in the last video that I was talking about these in, I paid like $166 for them at Target.com and they came to my house in like four days. So it was really, really awesome. Um, great price, great experience. And so yeah, for that alone, just the extra stuff, I guess, that's in the book, it was more than worth it. But something else that made it really worth it for me is whenever you've had your books for so long, I've had my old ones since 2015. So when you've had them for that long, you can't really access the online materials any longer. I think you can only access them for like a year. Um, so to go ahead and update my online materials in case I decide to go ahead and take my test again, it was absolutely more than worth it. 100% I will recommend these. I'm a Kaplan person, honestly, but um, I know that there are similar review books with the Princeton Review and with Next Step and all that, so it's really about finding what works for you and sticking with that. So I recommend Kaplan 100%. They don't endorse me, promise, but um, I really recommend Kaplan. I like them. So drop in the comments below if there is anything that Caden and I can address. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, please do that. Um, also hit that subscribe button and the like button and the little bell if you want to be notified whenever we upload new content. So sorry that this video is coming a little bit late, you guys. Um, school is actually starting for us in about three weeks and we've been trying to get everything ready to go back to school. And it's our senior year, which is really exciting. And um, oh yeah, I also got my third um, secondary application and I turned it in yesterday. So hopefully I'm going to hear back from that school pretty soon soon and I will keep you guys updated. Bye!